Hey there guys, this is Pharaoh2091, and welcome back to Let's Play Gone Home. Last time we left off, we checked out the TV room and the music room, and uh, let's check, see what else we can find out. Never mind's locked! Well then, never mind, I, well, speaking, well, hold on a minute. <laughs> well, that's to the basement. So, I guess we don't have a choice but to go upstairs. I was hoping to check out the entirety of the first floor before going to the first, second floor, but I I guess a game like this, uh, you know, we can't essentially know for sure where we're going to be going or um, or do everything like sequential sequ order, if you want to say. At least in, in my... Uh, at least me. You know what? I want to see something. Can I actually dial numbers here? Crap. Never mind. <sighs> well, up the stairs we go, then. Mm-hmm. First off, nothing in here. Newspaper clipping. Controlled burn scheduled for Boone, Boone County. Boone County. Plum, plumes of smoke will rise above the northeastern region of Boone County over the better part of next week as part of Forestry Service run controlled burn of overgrown sections of the Flintlock National Forest. Forestry crews have been preparing the area for two for months. The burn operation will take place between 8 a.m. 5 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and possibly into Thursday, depending on the speed of progress according to Forestry Service. In addition to removing dead and overgrown veget vegetation that can lead to wilderness wildfires in drier months, the operational service a valuable training tool for the forestry and firefighting personnel involved, said senior con conservationist Janice Greenbrier. Smoke will likely linger in the area throughout the following weekend. So nice, our mother was a... Uh, she got in the article. Cool. Cards. Okay. Alright. That's that. Painting. I gotta scratch my chin. Sorry. What? It, what is that? Oh, I thought it was like a piece of paper hanging on. I guess it's just a piece of dry um, wallpaper just being ripped off. Okay. Uh, wait. What the hell? I'm assuming that's Sam's room. <laughs> uh, comb? Ooh. <laughs> oh, a personal calendar. I can't read. Uh... Freak A, what does it say? Couples bowling? Okay. Couples bowling, cooking class, take apron, Friday ballroom dancing. Same thing over and over again. Couples bowling, uh, cooking class, ballroom dance, dancing, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now what does it say? Wednesday, Friday, cook the big meal for Carrie and Sam. Hmm. I guess, I guess it, well, I guess it, I'm assuming maybe our mother's, uh, journal there? Or weekly planner? Um, okay, exam form. Come on, jeez. Notice of temporary personnel transfer. Bruce Pendleton, head of personnel. State Forestry Service. To aid in the upcoming prescribed burn operation, a ranger of expertise and refuser is being transferred to station at Flintlock National Forest. Effective 19. Please see attached personnel file. The overseeing officer of Flaming Forester Station, senior conservationist Janice Greenbrier, is charged with supervision of transfer personnel. The duration of transfer will be based upon performance evaluation as well as the recommendation of the overseeing officer. Okay. Hmm. Alright, that's that. What is this? Cards? Oh, another cassette tape. Bratmobile Potty Mouth? Oh, okay. For Sam. Oh, that is cool. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Love things to... My God. Yeah, you're gonna like this one. I love that. Guys, seriously, I remember cassette tapes I do some people always wrote in the back of it. What does it say? Oh, F your fans. Ooh. <laughs> It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is like, instantly just right. I gave her the grand Psycho House tour, and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know, 
I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, you have got to listen to this. I haven't stopped playing it since. So first off, Sam, you need to give Daniel his freaking game back. That's not cool. Sam, stop leaving the every damn light in the house on. You're as bad as your sister. <gasps> they know that I did it. <laughs> okay. Wait, hold on. To what? Sternly word a letter. To whom it may concern, I, Samantha Greenbrier, uh, am 17 years old and that am therefore an independent, fully functional human being. Well, we were all at that stage. The fact that you still forbid me from going to the city on my own is frankly absurd. Uh, compare it with Katie, who's only three years older than me, and yet you allowed her to go all the way across an ocean to another continent on her own. I just want to spend an evening in a normal, totally safe city on my own like a human being, and since you may also remember I have my own car now, you can't really stop me. Warmest regards, your daughter, Samantha. <laughs> the teenage rebellious phase. Oh boy, we were, we were all there. Or you guys are still going through it. Or you guys haven't reached it yet. So here's uh, Sam's room. I'm going to turn on all the lights. This screams 90s and uh, punk rockish. Alright. I can hear the buzzing the stereo. Put it back. Oh, here's another cassette tape of Brand Wheel Cool School. I will play it just a teeny bit. Just tell me. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Don't fall. Oh, it fell. Let me grab that. My computer's not liking me anymore. It's like making a lot of noise. I, I think I gotta clean it out. It's probably overheating. Uh, turn that off. So I guess throughout this whole time I'm playing, I feel like maybe we can put two and two together to, um, like um. How do I describe it? About what really happened here. And I think sooner or later we'll figure everything out. So we got Adventurous the Cat Returns. This kind of reminds us... First off, it kind of looked like a Super Nintendo cartridge. I mean, it's not going to fully say it. This kind of reminds me of Acro the Bat. Yeah, I think Acro Bat or Acro the Bat. I think that's what it's called. Pretty cool event, uh, platformer game for Super Nintendo. Uh, read codes. Chun-Li moves. Fireball. So, kick, 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 kick. <laughs> uh, you know, I if somebody who plays Street Fighter a lot, uh, they can tell me in the, in the comments below if that's actually the real moves or not. I haven't really played Street Fighter growing up as a kid, so I really don't know the moves. Um, but that's kind of cool. Kind of cool references there. Scrutinize. Oh. Well, here you. You guys can go ahead and take a look at that if you so desire. Um, I'm turning my eye. Hey, man. No, 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 wait, no. Uh, yeah. Okay, there you go. Hopefully you guys got a good look at it. <laughs> oh, can I look at the sticker itself? Oh. I don't think there's anything this size, so let's open here. A couple more games. Journey of Crystal. So... Final Fantasy something, and Super Spitfire. Okay, this isn't the night. This isn't uh, '95, so yeah, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, uh, especially Super Nintendo, will be like the thing uh, now. So I think the N64 was just about coming out. I think anyway. Um, so a combination we don't know. We don't know it just yet. We'll see if we can get it later. Uh, pardon. I haven't had that much to drink, Jody Foster. How many fingers am I holding up? You better not been having... You better not be reading my secret diary again. Uh, here you go, Mitten. Have some pate. Gross. Meow. So a bunch of 90s uh, celebrities who are... Some of them are still prevalent today. So there's that. <laughs> um... 
She's a kind of she's a cleaner room. I want to believe X Files. Computer, stop being so loud. Wait, grab what? Grab, grab Steggy something. Oh wait, wait, Steggy. That's kind of cute. I was I was hoping maybe her combination would be on it, but I can't be that easy, not can it? It's under her bed. Oh well, cool actually. Um, the brother went fifty. Of course, it's a. Uh, this is the one me and my dad are building. Want to go for a ride when it's done? Maybe that's Lonnie. Who's, who, I am assuming that's who it is. Who wrote that? Who gave that to her? Was slip. Samantha Greenbrier, year eleven, Fletcher. <laughs> uh, shop. Uh, metalworking graven. So yeah, C minus for what? No, it's not a challenging assignment. Metal plaque for family portrait. Reasonable subject, but not complex. When I said that mom and dad should be replaced with parents names, I did not mean they just uh, just add them underneath. Acceptable leveling on edges. Show more pride in work. Oh my god. So the frame that we saw, the portrait we saw, um. Uh, in the foyer, I guess uh, Sam built it or made it. Okay, I don't think there's anything else underneath. Check the drawers though. Another magazine of uh, AIDS in Africa. Oh boy, Soul Asylum Live, Eddie Vedder, Weezer. <laughs> cool. All right. Um. Another magazine here grew. Kurt Cobain, oh he did kill himself in ninety four, didn't he? Nirvana. I think me and my friends got in a big discussion about Nirvana like a this was a couple months back, saying like, oh, did they really do much for the pop scene or like the rock scene or whatever? And like it's like I think they did, but especially what happened to what Kurt did, I think it kind of Cemented it, if that, might make, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Hi, Lonnie. I wrote this first. I wrote this first period and left it in your locker on the way to school. On the way to second, it's what I call the cool kids are doing. I've decided. Uh, I decided to write me back. Also, here's an idea for something to draw: two cats and a motorcycle. Hey, this is a good idea. What are, what are what all the kids are actually doing? Is wait, sewing each other's pages in their. Beepers? Sending each other page, pages in their beeper. Oh my god. Sending each other pages in their beeper. Do you understand how old that sentence is right there? But we're cooler than that because uh, what? Because guess what? I can't put this on a beeper. True. <laughs> Your drawing of cats was so good I added a background to make it even better. Maybe I should just stick to writing though. Uh -huh, I like it. How did you know that you were about to be abducted by aliens? I'm looking at Mr. Fish? Phyllis? Whatever. Right now, I feel like he would <clears throat> probably have lots of cats. Also, like his shame is much. 902 no religiously. <laughs> I'll ask about him after class. He said he doesn't have cats, and also he's never watched 902 no. I could see in his eyes that he was lying. <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. Uh, you know, I wonder if things are actually hiding under underneath other objects. I guess not. Worth a shot. Clipping. Sam, I think the creative writing track would be perfect for you. So it's a pre college Okay. This is actually good. See, you're helping her with her creativity. Um, Reed College, one of the nation's most lauded private liberal arts and science, sciences universities, is proud to announce this 14th annual summer program for young scholars. This program invites students of grades 10 and 11 to attend lectures. Uh, dis workshops, discussions, covering a wide variety of intellectual pursuits, focusing on small group sessions, and programs on distinct tracks. Mm -hmm -hmm. So, English creative writing is definitely what she would like. Band of benefits of it's three students from each week will be offered a full scholarship. Oh, wow. So that's nice. Huh. Cool. I wonder, I hope that, um, Sam would actually be serious about that. Uh, what else is here? Uh, that that cord is gonna be bent like no other. <laughs> That's all I care about. It's like, oh lord, what's happening? Uh, wow. Okay, 
Okay, anything I can read? Anything? Huh. Well, I figured it would be something. Nailed it. Oh, wow. That's so bad. And a nail file. Emery board? Is that what they're called? Like, seriously? I'm being completely serious. I thought they were just easily just nail file. Okay, so we got Emma. What does it say? Oliver Twist. Okay. Um, Tom Sawyer. Had to read that. Ben Hu. I think I've heard of it. I don't think I've ever read it. Jungle Books. I can't read that one. I don't know. Virginian. Treasure Island. The Call of the Wild. Master of the War of the Worlds. Secrets of what? I can't, I can't read some of this. Metaphors and Frankenstein. I actually... Frankenstein is actually one of my favorite books. After I read it senior year in high school. Just because how... I guess how misinformed I was about Frankenstein. Because, you know, I think many people when they come growing up, they're like, they think Frankenstein is like, Arr, a monster in green and has bolts in the side of it. When actually we know that Frankenstein is... The monster didn't actually have a name. Frankenstein is a doctor. Dr. Victor Frankenstein and... Uh, Frankenstein, well, the monster was called uh, Frankenstein's monster. Okay. Oh, well, there's a note. Ah, uh, disciplinary, discipli disciplinary referral. Uh, student named Yolanda De Soto. Oh, we saw that. Oh crap! Where did we see that though? Oh, we saw this like the picture of De Soto somewhere. Oh crap! I can't remember. Uh, so, 1024, Mr. Benchley also, Mr. Benchley observed Miss DeSoto wearing a t-shirt with an unacceptable image on her front, a large beer can labeled Pabst Blue Ribbon, oh, <laughs> oh, that's like very cheap beer. Miss DeSoto was sent to the guidance counselor's office, actually never perfectly. Miss DeSoto was given the option to turn her shirt inside out, change into a shirt from her gym locker, or to be suspended for the next rest of the day. So Soto chose suspension. Oh, okay. Her father was called up there, before, uh, but there was no answer, no answer machine. This is Soto, must return to this form tomorrow. Signed by her father. And... Student Center, Lonnie... Lonnie D? So, okay. Okay. Um... I don't know why I didn't put two together, but... She just calls herself Lonnie, you know, her name is Yolanda. Um, kind of makes me think, like, her father her father didn't sign it. Like, he didn't, yeah, father didn't sign it. And it didn't pick up, so I'm making me, it's making me kind of question things right there. Uh, let me check here real quick. Still need a combination to her locker. Got your number. Are you going to, are you going to dance with anybody? Isn't, wasn't there a game like this? I could have sworn there was a board game like this. I I, I think it was on board games. And I, I think they I think they also paired it on The Simpsons, I wanna say. The King's Labyrinth, chapter two. Fraying threads. Captain Lettergar still Oh wow, so she continued it. Still in her flowing skirt and sturdy jerkin, descended into a single shining thread into the lower cavern of the labyrinth. She and the first mate on her own now grew closer to her goal. The throne room of the dead immortal king of the island. The first mate slid down the line onto the stone floor. She swept chocolate bone dust on the front of her cabin's trousers and looked up at Allegra. Uh, silken thread, nigh unbreakable thanks to the enchanted moss yeah, that inhabited the island, trailed behind, leading their way back to the entrance. From further into the labyrinth, a moaning began to echo. The moaning grew louder and clearer. It turned into words of fur from some ancient language that could not, they could not understand. The king's cursed voice. The hairs on Captain Legra's arms stood on end. She looked back at the first mate, whose eyes remained locked in the blackness of the passage for a moment too long before noticing the captain's gaze. The first mate nodded silently ahead. Following the king's ghostly song deeper and deeper into the labyrinth, they came upon a rocky gap spilling forth o o otherworldly blue light. The great basin of the dead king's throne room lay below. Skeletal and rotted robes, the king was hunched over the blue orb, topping his, blue scepter, topping his royal scepter. Shadows of his bony fingers danced in the walls like ghouls. As he sang, wailing souls flowed in one, one by one through the cracks in the cave walls, pulled into the orb, causing it to glow, glow brighter and brighter. I can't read. Behind the king, a long staircase hewn from rock laid down, uh, led down into the chamber from a passage at the top. 
Allegra said, we have the advantage in numbers. I will draw his attention, and then you... The first mate interrupted. No, I am smaller and quicker, and you know of dealing with mystic energies like these. I will circle to the other side, get the king's attention, and lead him on a merry chase. She held up on the silk line. All chased by his invincible threat, of course. Allegra said it is a good plan, but perhaps we should go together. The first mate shook her head. You know this is our best chance. Don't be afraid for me. They grasped her hands and exchanged three tight squeezes, their palms growing warmer. The first mate tied the shining thread to the belt of her trousers, gave a quick salute and a wink, and dashed off. Allegra waited, staring vigilantly across the top of the stairs where the first mate was appear. The king continued his... Wait, no, no! The singing stopped. The king turned and began walking up the stairs. Allegra wanted to call out to do anything to stop the first mate from running headfirst into the danger. She tried tugging on the line to signal her. No use. The king was nearly at the top of the stairs when the first mate burst through the passageway. She skidded to a stop. Even across the yawning basin, Allegra could see the first mate's eyes grow wide. She turned and ran. Summoning her as undead power, the king left the ground, levitating, guiding, gliding behind her with distressing speed. From some dank passage much too far away, Allegra heard the first mate scream. She was already running toward the sound. The line in Allegra's hand went taut, then, sh then shuddered. It felt slack to the stone floor. As Luka ran, she was gathering line, twisted around her arm. She came to a ten. The unbreakable thread dangled limply, its end shredded and frayed in her hand. She tossed to the ground and ran, ran, ran. Cool. I, I like reading this. I do apologize if you guys don't like me reading it, but... I do. Just interesting. Man, Sam had, these, had, had this back in, like, fourth grade. Do you guys... Oh, my God. I, I remember my sisters had, like, colorful folders like this. Wow. This really, really takes me back. Mitten. So, we had a cat. Huh. Um, I don't see anything else here. Actually, I'm gonna close it. Dang, I was hoping, like, someone would be behind the door. Um. Okay, let's go in here. Oh! Oh, okay, just another... Wear goggles, rubber gloves when handling in this room. Handling anything in this room. Ah. Uh... Oh, I thought that was us for a minute. I was like, oh, we can see our shadow. Well, hmm. I was hoping we'll find a combination to the locker, but honestly, I guess... I don't know. Well, I can check certain things. I mean, I doubt it's going to be the radio station, but it's worth a shot. 101. Nope. Oh, you know what? Mm. Well, I'll say maybe it could be in one of this, one of these, by kind of doubting it. Is there like a, supposed to be a face in there? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Where could a number or her combination be? Man, like a... It really sucks my computer is really doing that now. Anytime I'm recording or sometimes even streaming. I guess like it's... I hope it's not running its course. I really hope it's not. You know, I'm going to go back downstairs. Because I could have sworn there was... um. I could have sworn there was a... Like a school supply list, and I don't know. I didn't, they mentioned a combination lock, but I don't know if she wrote her lock in there. Um, see. Oh, damn it! Yeah, so the standard combination lock for your sign locker. Dang it! So either it's still in one of the rooms I have yet to check out, or I uh, just missed it somewhere. I'm going to take a quick glance, because I, I got to end the episode here anyway. Um, I'm spending like in 20 minutes in one freaking room. Uh, anything here? Guess not. Ah, oh, well. Or unless this is also hers. 
Hey Sam, do you want to see Pulp Fiction after school uh, at the Coliseum? It came out last week, and I told and Todd won't shut up about it. So either it's good, or we or we can make fun of it uh, for liking it. Pulp Fiction is awesome. Come on now, my mom's supposed to cook dinner for us uh, tonight for for a change, but I can just ditch out to ta- ditch out on it probably. What time? Also, isn't that movie supposed to be really violent? Am I gonna barf? <laughs> According to Todd, it's pretty hardcore. I guess Uma Thurman gets stabbed in the heart with a heroin needle. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of a that's kind of hilarious. Also, something about cheeseburgers. <laughs> oh, is it important? Uh, something about cheeseburgers is important. Todd wants to see it again. Seven fifteen. Okay, don't barf. All right, see you then. Barf. Oh my God, I'm loving the references. Um, dang it! I guess I couldn't find a uh, like any type of like combination lock. Dang it! I'm kind of mad. I, you know, maybe I'll still find. Maybe I'll come across it. I shouldn't be upset. Hopefully, I'll come across it soon enough. Um. Okay, I God, I'm sorry. I'm taking so so long, guys. This is just. This is just cool. I'm really enjoying this game. I I guess for me, I'm just enjoying it just because. You know, yes, I was still like a very young kid, in the '90s. I mean, I was like what five, four or five, at this time period. But I still remember all this stuff because I I still essentially did grow up in the '90s. You know, I was a kid during, you know, during the 90s and whatever, and yeah, it really does bring back a lot of stuff, a lot of memories. Okay, well, next time, guys, we'll continue looking throughout the house and uh, see what else we can find. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Gone Home. See you guys later.